All right, let's I'm going to call this uh, LCAP meeting to order Thursday, September 15th at 6.05 p.m. Uh, welcome, everybody. Thank you for being here. And those on Zoom, thank you. Um, what we'll do is uh, I'll turn it over to Laura at this point for attendance and roll call. Unless, uh, would you like to wait and see if we can have more on the sure. minutes and we'll do roll call? So, if you want to just keep going, okay, sounds good. That. Skip to, to Trent then, or, or John. Yeah, so why don't we uh, start with our board views on updates? So, we okay. have uh, Ms. Costa's with us this evening. Um, so, Ms. Costa, if you want to come off mute, you should be able to uh, speak to the group. All just very grateful for the community support and grateful to hear your thinking. So thanks a lot. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, so uh, our deputy superintendent. Melissa. Yeah, I'd love to give a couple of updates. So um, this week, so I was reflecting just on the activities of this week and I thought it might be nice to update the pack on some of the things that I admit that are related to working our plan. So, um, action 1.5, which is focused on workforce diversity. Uh, we have built in there our Cultivating Leaders Pilot Program, which is a leadership development program that's focused on building skills of teacher leaders, aspiring leaders, new principals, and also new vice principals. And this was our first launch of this pilot program. We have 20 aspiring leaders and teacher leaders, and we have I'm going to say roughly 40 new vice principals and principals who are part of the program. So this week, we launched our first seminar series, which was focused on unconscious bias um, and equity practices. And it, we had a great turnout. It was a great professional learning session. And it was nice to see something that we've been planning into fruition. And so that's made possible because of what we write and plan. Um, another thing that I participated, it was just today, and this is related to inclusive school climates and equity. So this is action 2.3. And today I attended our historically black colleges and universities recruitment fair. And so what's very exciting about that is that it focuses on juniors and seniors and um, whoever wants to attend, we provide transportation. They attended El Camino, they came, we fed them pizza. And then they um, talked to recruiters for historically black colleges. And um, there is on the spot interviews as well as on the spot admissions that occur. And some students are awarded um, scholarships on the spot. So that happened today. I don't know the number of how much, um, how many admissions occurred or scholarships, but I can loop back with the pack later because they just did that today. So um, it's neat to see stuff in real time happening. And I thought I would share that with the pack. Yeah. Um, I was going to ask when you said the new principals and new vice principals, what qualifies as new? Is it anyone who's like a first year this year or people within a couple of years of just starting? First and second year. Right. I can imagine juniors and seniors that get the great news that day and not expecting that. That must be yeah, that's nice. yeah, very cool. Very good. Thank you that's for that report. Great. That's great. That's really cool. All right. Well, I'll turn it over to Laura for general <laughs> visitor comments. <laughs> Um, at this point in time, um, we open the floor to visitor comments. We have one visitor in the room, Mr. Nelson, would you? Uh, I don't have any comments. Okay, thank you. All right, next on the agenda uh, is about the superintendent selection process. We're going to ask the PAC for some input on this. I'll give that over to Trent. Thank you very much. Thanks, Steve. So um, I think everybody's aware we're the process of looking for the next superintendent is Mr. Kearns has uh, said he's going to retire before the end of the school year here. Um, and what we would typically do is go out and, and ask for input along the lines of what are those characteristics people want to see in a new superintendent. Um, and as the board kind of had some conversation and some dialogue this time around, um, they wanted to change that just a little bit and really focus on what are those bodies of work that they really need this next person to focus on so they can look for the person with the skill set to really meet those challenges as well. So we've been going out and doing a process where we've kind of focused on two questions. One is around 
what are those things we really value in the system right now? Those things that are important to us, those things that we think are either working well or that we want to make sure we continue to invest in. Uh, and then the second question then, of course, becomes well, what do we want to see in the future? What are those hopes we have? Uh, what are those areas of opportunity that we think are out there for us to address? Or are those new bodies of work that perhaps we need to bring to the table and have some conversations around? Um, so that's what we've been going out and doing. Um, we've had some uh, forums. We've had uh, a rather uh, large thought exchange process that went on. Um, I've been to all the committees that have been meeting in late September, or I'm sorry, late August and early September. Uh, we gave an email invitation to the other committee members who weren't able to meet during those times. We've been out to all the employee groups. So we've been out to uh, quite a few folks to have these conversations. Um, and you guys are actually the final group tonight that gets to provide some input to this process. What we're doing with all of this, of course, is before the board goes through that uh, selection process, so before they go through paper screen, and before they go through actual interviews, they're going to take a look at all this input that we've collected um, and really look at what are those bodies of work that are being called out. So they have that as something to reflect on as they look at who the next superintendent will be. So with that, I came prepared to break everybody into groups and let you have some conversation. <laughs> um, and I'm going to pivot. Um, and uh, instead, just have a casual conversation because we have uh, a small group tonight. Um, but I'll start with just kind of that first question area um, and have some dialogue maybe of what are the things right now that we value in the system that we want to make sure we continue, that we want to see a continued investment in? Well, I, I, I like a, a lot of things that we're doing. Uh, so I, I would like to see, I guess I'll just speak about what, how I envision it is just, you know, pick up on, uh, where opening oh, the superintendent picks up where we left off on a lot of the work that not just LCAP, but entire district facilities, you name it, every department, uh, you know, pick up and try not to lose any momentum on those projects. Um, I'd also welcome new ideas from the new superintendent on how to be better, um, Strive for that. Um, you don't need to write down there. <laughs> it's okay. I'm not doing some reason. I'm going to do more. <laughs> well, but I mean, uh, you know, I'm just uh, I'm excited. You know, I'm, it's you know, there's a lot of change this year, like Pam said, and uh, and so it's going to be exciting. There's going to be some change, and some of it will be you know, seamless, and some of it may not, but it'll. You know, it's, it's, it's progress in my direction. I think. And I'd like to see uh, just keep building on the work that we've built. It's basically in no specific area. It comes to mind. And it's all about the kids. To me. So. Well, I heard you call out kind of some of the work that we've talked about in the LCAP, um, some of the work kind of in facilities. We've obviously seen a lot with the bond program went on. Um, nothing else specifically that you would, would highlight as bodies of work that um, stick out or would be important to you. That's okay if not. I mean, um, I have things that are that I'm thinking about my 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 kids' school. So I mean, there's things that I would hope and dream would happen at my kids' school. But I think just working towards community community building, especially after COVID, it, it was rough. Being a parent, trying to have that community back when you're getting kind of pushed off. So I'd like to see us building more community. Um, and when you build community, students do better. And so I'd really like to see that. Uh, and I mean, and, and I'm not saying like events and things like that, although that works, but I'd like to see more in parent involvement, not just like in committees and things like this, but on each individual school site. I'd like to see more parent engagement which is all about the community. And when there's when there's parent engagement, students do better. It's just and they're safer on campus and all the way down the line. So that's kind of near and dear to my heart. Um, and that's I think that's my number one. I think. Um, for me, just personally, I've got kids who are mixed race. So anything that if you've got people who have a lot of background or training on diversity issues, like your time I was right in my alley, makes me so happy to hear about all that different types of training, like people who are going to kind of bring that awareness or push those issues forward. Um, I guess, yeah, I don't know. I like that. I, I think it's very 
cool that the group at Rio has started kind of a discussion around dress code and people have been receptive to that. So I, I, I don't know, just, yeah, people who are open to, I guess, kind of forward change and uh, progression is always something I'm a fan of. And so some of the comments um, kind of led into that second question, which in many of our my conversations it kind of has, which is just those hopes for the future. Um, are there any other thoughts on kind of pieces that you want to see brought to the table, perhaps maybe even things that we don't really tackle right now that would be new bodies of work or um, areas of opportunity that we could really invest more heavily in and, and really focus in a different way, perhaps? So would this be like experience that a candidate might have or just things that you think once they take office you'd like to see? More, more about the, the system as a whole and things that you'd like to see in the system. So the context being that we'd be looking for a leader who can help us do those things. I mean, what, uh, sorry, uh, that's okay. I was gonna say one thing I've noticed just working at the school level is I think sometimes it's hard for parents who maybe have an issue or question to understand how to navigate uh, getting higher up at the district level, who to talk to. I know a lot of times if there's a conflict or a problem or a disagreement, or maybe they or the teacher or the principal doesn't see eye to eye, they're kind of referred to a certain department. And I think I've seen like a loss of faith where people don't think that's going to get them anywhere. So maybe kind of focusing on, you know, getting parents in a, I don't know, more of a, comfortable mindset where they feel like they're being heard if they want to have a complaint or an issue that they bring up to a higher level. Yeah. Navigating the system. Yeah, or just understanding how to do it or, you know, what people need to. Or go, how to access. Yeah, yeah, I think there's a lot of confusion around that. So I, what comes to mind when you ask that question, I, is A to, a to G, the graduation rate, performance, preparedness for after high school. And you know, some, the numbers are have suffered in the last few years, so I'd like to see a big improvement on that. Uh, so I mean, who doesn't? But um, and then there's certain. Uh, there was a Wall Street Journal article about fourth graders, and my son's a fourth grader, so it immediately popped out on the how how they're kind of affected. In certain certain years or ages were affected more or less than than others. So I'd really just like to kind of just follow the the data that's coming out in real time from, from uh, the, the Department of Education on what groups and what age groups need need the most support. Um, and, and, I, and I can't help but think about like, so, you know, the, the kids that were, that are now, I guess, sophomores in college that left when their senior year was COVID and then some of them were freshmen in college and their senior year was COVID. Um, I guess I'm just, that might be off by year. But, but um, it's just, I, I don't want, I want that to, I'd like to see a, a more normal path for these kids graduating high school and so they don't have to, uh, and I'm worried about them uh, when they get to college and then if they fail, they're, they'd be kind of crushed, you know, and if they're not ready for the real world when they graduate high school, even though they may have a 3.0, if it's not really a 3.0 by collegiate standards, it's kind of letting them down, not kind of, it is letting them down. So, um, I would like to see a focus on education and uh, as far as just nuts and bolts and and maybe short term and but I just think that uh, you know, we're shortchanging them if they're not prepared for college when we, when we give them a diploma. I would like, like to see them devastated or not motivated after they they all freshman year. Uh, don't make their life miserable either by just, <laughs> <laughs> like grinding them. But just you know, focus on you know, trying to eliminate some fluff and hone in on getting them ready. Do you guys have any areas you want to share that other groups maybe brought up things that we didn't talk um, about that have kind of been on the radar? I, I can share kind of just some high level stuff. So, um, as we've talked about things that folks value and want to see. Focus on continuing. Um, there's been conversation around our, our work around equity from a number of groups um, in, in different formats, um, but I, I'd say that's an overall thing. 
um, conversations about building relationships um, and sustaining relationships, building on the strong relationships we have, strengthening other relationships that we strengthen as well. Um, certainly part of the conversation I've heard. Um, if you do go online at uh, San Juan, that you slash participate, Cloud Exchange results are up there. So you can see all the theme areas, you can see all 789 thoughts that were shared as well and how those were all ranked. Um, so there's quite a diversity of thought in there. Uh, we themed them into 10 um, theme areas. Um, but of course, that's our theming. Feel free to scroll through and see kind of what themes poke out to you. Um, but it, I think that gives you good insight as well because we did have over a thousand people participate in that. And it was really a good mix between over 24, 25% students. Um, the majority were parents um, and then a mid group of, of staff. So we match a really nice mix of participants this time around. So um, that gives us good insight and it's generally mirrored the conversations I've had with the smaller groups as well. So anything else you want to add to the conversation or have we had anybody jump on Zoom by chance? I knew a couple of people trying to um mom it not able to. I guess uh, I'll bring up uh, on the facilities end. Um, some of the K through eight schools, and this is kind of talking to myself a little bit, the kids at my son's school, is the middle school is kind of not really a middle school. Um, no lockers, not even a 12 by 12 inch box to keep their phone safe or anything like that. So there's kind of a, and I've heard, I've talked to other parents at different schools and they kind of say the same thing where there's not really a middle school experience at the K schools in sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. So if there's any chance to get something more of a middle school experience in facilities, um, you know, some of the, the buildings need some help, the classroom, the temporary classrooms, maybe they need some structures, real structures. Now at this point, I think they're 20 years old or something. We're never supposed to be that that's this long. Like I said, lockers, um, maybe some programs district-wide to make like a mentorship for eighth graders. I know they have buddies and things like this, but maybe something that's community-driven or fundraisers that the kids could do or to support the community. That's just ideas. Yeah, I think that's good. So I'm going to take this back, um, incorporate it with the other committee uh, conversations I've had. I do break it out kind of by committee so folks can kind of see the different voices from different committees. Um, I'll share that with the board. Again, they're going to take a look at all of that before they go through that selection process. Um, but then we'll be doing that kind of the second half of this month, um, working through that process. So we'll have some updates probably towards the end of the month going forward and kind of where we're at in terms of that. Um, but thank you for the conversation. I do appreciate yeah. it. Some other folks were here to join us, but um, hopefully they've been able to participate in the other reasons. And thanks for all your work on that. Thank you. Chair, while you're here, do you mind if we also need to circle back about what uh, occurred on Tuesday with the approval of the bylaws? Yeah, are we doing that under your uh, item? Uh, since I would, since I would never go off of the uh, agenda, they, you know what? Then I we'll think it, it is down. Wait, is it? Okay. I mean, I think it can fit under number seven. Okay, perfect. We will go into number seven. I mean, yep, yeah. Yep. Yep. Thanks, Trent. Thanks, Trent. And uh, John, you want to take the OCAP PAC organization? Sure. All right. Well, let's start off then with on, on Tuesday. Um, uh, the board did approve um, our new bylaws. Uh, we printed off a copy and I added to the, um, can pass it out to you. The includes. Um, we just wanted to make sure that the facts can see uh, where the input that was provided at our last OPAC meeting and how that was incorporated into. Um, the final adopted uh, revisions there. So you can see on page one, uh, we changed in this regard from um, a majority to any number. Uh, 
on charge as directed by the, the board superintendent or designee, the committee shall be used to say serve at the pleasure of the Board of Education. And now we've included the consult and provide advice, which is consistent with uh, the language of the uh, Ed Code as well as in our bylaws. And then on page three, uh, there was a change from the committee shall be limited to parents or legal guardians of pupils enrolled in the district. And where uh, it used to read who are uh, low income foster three English learners. And there was some comment last time around um, expanding that to uh, us to be limited. There was uh, some discussion there. So we uh, are focusing on state and district identified targeted student groups there to ensure that we're not missing out in any of our groups. Those were sort of the three big pieces that came up, ideas that came up at our last meeting. So we just wanted to circle back to make sure the facts saw that that input um, was heard by our Board of Education and was included in the revised bylaws. Appreciate that. Uh, the only other piece I'll add is just some conversation the board did have last night. I don't know if you were able to me. Um, but their kind of conversation last night was just some debate and dialogue on that requirement to be a parent. And we did write in that you know if your, if your student graduates, you don't get kicked off, you right. have to finish out. Uh, <laughs> But they had some dialogue on whether that's really how they want it and they want a little more flexibility to appoint some non parents. They left it as is. So, right now, it's parents. So, that was one of their interests was to see how that plays out, how that works, um, and then perhaps have an additional conversation on that. Yeah. Okay. So, if there's not an interest or something, maybe there's not enough time availability for parents, um, would that be something that's quickly changeable so they can appoint community members? We, we would just, I mean, if, if, I think we just took the concern back to the board and just said, hey, either we're just having a really tough time finding parents who are able to serve right now, um, but we have a plethora of community members putting their hands up. Um, you know, that's certainly a conversation we can go back with. Uh, and it's, it's just a matter of going for discussion. Uh, yeah, one thought maybe, I mean, you could just put former parents, even if it, just if you want to keep it narrow. If they had children in San Juan, that could be kind of moving it a little bit, but not all the way. It, it's some, it's an idea. One of the other things that was pointed out to me, not by board members, but by other folks in conversation, was whether we were being completely inclusive of all caregivers um, in a family structure. Right? So we, if it's not necessarily a parent, correct. Um, if it's a grandparent who doesn't necessarily have custodial rights, but it's still a good player or an aunt. Or uncle, so we're still a big player. Would we not? You know, where does that fall? So, yeah, that conversation under LCAP, so. yeah, under LCAP, I mean, there's foster parents, right? So, um, maybe there should be language in there about foster parents because foster parents should be able to serve on the LCAP. Yeah, so, guardians would encompass that, as a parent. Yeah. Okay. yeah, all right, just making just get technical, but making sure. <laughs> But no, again, and just the second one, Don said, thank you for the conversation. Me, I think it's not probably much better having the conversation with the corporate both shared from the back. So great. Yeah, good too, man. Thank you. All right, John. All right. So moving on. Um, so with our new bylaws, um, our uh, organizational meeting, we are scheduled to review and recommend approval of our annual report to the board, uh, review our public meeting calendar. For the year, and then um, uh, for the second time this e evening, gather some committee perspectives and insights regarding uh, with this item here our educational partner engagement strategy. Uh, so, I thought we would start with our annual chairperson report to the Board of Education. So, with regard to this, uh, this was presented to the Board of Education at the end of last school year uh, by Kim Brown on June 14th. So we have already completed this requirement uh, this item this evening. Uh, looking ahead here at our meeting calendar, um, we have included both our district scheduled public LCAP meetings, as well as our Board of Education meetings where discussion and or action is scheduled to take place regarding uh, the LCAP. Um, I guess for just for those uh, of you who attend both our PAC and Board of Education meetings, just really to note that our PAC meetings start at 6, or our Board of Education meetings start a little later at 6 30. Uh, 
And then with regard to our educational partner outreach strategy, um, essentially what I'd like to do here is, is begin by sharing what our outreach strategy is with the group, and then we can end by providing uh, an opportunity to engage in some discussion as well as uh, consult and provide some advice uh, to the Board of Education regarding our educational partner strategy. So LCAP development really begins with education code. And it states that, we, that the district shall consult with teachers, principals, administrators, other school personnel, uh, local bargaining units of the school district, parents and pupils in developing our control and accountability plan. And as a result of this requirement, but I would also say is one of our core beliefs in San Juan to the importance of ensuring that the voice of our ed partners are included in the, in the process as well. This is a list of the partner groups, which you can see here includes our students, family, staff, and lab, uh, labor groups and community partners that really reflect our diverse community and um, who we have engaged in the past uh, year uh, with regard to the development of our LCAP and who we intend on engaging again um, this year as well in our plan development. So what is this process going to look like? Uh, we will be engaging multiple educational partner groups using um, multiple outreach and engagement strategies. Uh, the idea behind here is we want to differentiate our approach to meet the needs of our educational partners, as well as maximize participation specifically for our targeted student groups. Um, so you can see here this includes uh, everything from a thought exchange uh, to climate surveys, um, listening session and focus groups, um, but also just engaging our partners in either one-on-one, -on -one, small group, large group settings using a variety of different communication forms, um, online and person form paper. Again, really trying to differentiate our approach uh, to meet people with where they're at so that they can uh, participate. All right, so then what we'll do is um, after we engage in this process, we then review the educational partner input that we uh, collect for common themes. And we look not only within groups, but also across our groups, um, looking for themes that are connected to our four LCAP goals. So here you can see an example of where we have our four LCAP goals. And these are some of the themes that emerged from last year's listening sessions that informed our current LCAP. And so once again, this year we would follow a similar process of looking for those themes and then aligning them to our and collectively then we then use this data along with additional uh, data that we have to revise existing actions develop new actions and then target funds strategically and so what you can see here with this slide is it shows where our ed partner key themes for goals one and two as an example are reflected in our current lcap actions And then finally, we wanted to share with the pack a preview of the questions that we are planning on using to guide our listening sessions for here. So each of these questions is aligned to our LCAP goals. Um, and I think it's worth noting too that each of these questions were developed in partnership with our San Juan Youth Voice Advocates, who really supported us in crafting and wording the, uh, the questions that we're going to be um, we're going to be using. Uh, so essentially, we would just change, like for the students, it would be what is working well to help you feel included and connected. But for uh, our LCAP pack, it might be based on your observations and experiences this year, what is working well to help San Juan students or your child. And then our plan for collecting voice um, will be to ask all parts of each of the questions um, up front. And then open it up to the group to engage in conversation. And then as the conversations are going, we can capture the group's thinking using this graphic organizer, which really highlights the three parts of each question, which are um, the help would be sort of would be the plus, preventing uh, the minus sign, and then what additional ideas do you have? So my fault. Um, so with that, uh, considering then, our educational partner strategy, what we just wanted to do 
and I know it's a small group this evening, but open it up to the to the pack for any perspectives and insights that you might be able to share with us and the board regarding our outreach strategy. Uh, this is one where the next superintendent, whoever we, we talked about that earlier, we just pick up with where, where we are now is keep adding to our list of uh, community groups, building on that. I think that would be one thing that first comes to mind anyway. I think it's an impressive list of educational partners. It's great to see so many different groups represented and getting to have input. Yeah, in the, at our leadership meeting, I mentioned that John, that's, it's good to see because it's my third year. It's, that list has grown a lot, probably doubled in size in two, two years or so. So it's good to see that going on. Um, First. Also, I love how the students got to be included in the questions. I think that's one of my favorite things about this. They had a lot to say <laughs> in the debrief. So we debriefed with them at the end of last year about their experience with facilitating listening sessions. They gave us a lot of great feedback. And so um, one of the pieces was how do we help get them more involved in the planning elements? because they were involved in implementing, like they were doing the listening sessions. So and John bringing them in and helping them give voice and input to the questions are gonna make them just that much better when they go out and talk with their peers. What a great resource. Yeah. It's like such a smart yeah. way to do it. No, they, such a good group of kids. Yeah. How, how are we, uh, uh, what, you know, like what form are we reaching out? Is it an it in-person group or is it out via email or is it a, a variety of different ways. Yeah, okay. um, we're using every, so let me give you an example. Um, we have some folks within our community that are connected to more of our uh, targeted groups. Um, uh, for example, because they are fostering students. So we have folks that directly work with our fostering students who might engage the group. But we even have members of our San Juan Youth Voice Advocates who um, are in foster care and will be conducting those uh, listening sessions because of the relationships and just the safety and openness of that where my presence, for example, would not necessarily be welcomed. So, um, <laughs> uh, and then there are other ways we're working with our bargaining groups to find additional staff members who represent our different bargaining groups to participate. Um, uh, and then of course, we're reaching and working with our face department to make sure that we're engaging as many different um, family groups as well. So really that's just a small sliver of the ways we're trying to engage our families. I'll ask her, I will pause her. Are there any visitor comments? <laughs> okay, no. Anyone? Anyone on Zoom? Yeah, trying to update their computers to get on, but Well, then we'll move right along. All right. Many business. Okay, should we go ahead and take attendance since it doesn't look not at this point, yeah, yeah we should. Just go ahead. All right. So um, I'm just going to acknowledge the people that are here, if that's OK. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so we have Elizabeth. <laughs> yes. Yes, here. <laughs> Steve. Here. All right. And then the minutes, of course, we don't have a form. So yeah, we'll do that next time. Back in March. All right, so um, <laughs> all right. Uh, we have um, some updates to our binders. We have our binders here for those uh, who could have been here to get them. <laughs> I got it. The binders are fantastic. Yes. A really good job with this, all Laura. I know, and she has to individually put all of these pages. They're updated. I'm like, I know how long that takes. I, yeah, no, you, <laughs> Not you, you did a wonderful job, Laura. Thank you. Um, and it includes uh, some updates. So, uh, table of contents is updated. Uh, we have the uh, uh, new approved bylaws from the Board of Education from September 13th. Updated calendar meetings, updated PAC member contact information. Um, there's a new placeholder. So I'll talk to my hand in front of the one. Placeholder for you to file your meeting agendas and minutes. Um, also, the approved LCAP report is in there. 
and that was provided um, overview from last year and but there's no new members to date so everyone should be aware of that um, it also includes updated L LCAP summary infographic um, so there's uh, let's see. Oh, it's a show, okay, yes, a short kind of condensed version of the LCAP, and, uh, but does not include the metrics. Um, it includes resources links, both for text and to video, and I'm assuming the video is our previous meetings, or? I think it would be some around the Okay. In 30 seconds. Okay, so yeah. some yeah. of the resource yeah. training, yeah. kind of yeah. training things, yeah. okay. All right, um, and then uh, some as a glossary of terms with acronyms and glossary for, for uh, terms. <laughs> and um, so we had discussion in a vote last year about the LCAP PACS picture on the district website on the LCAP page. Um, so um, I guess we can send an email out to folks uh, about if they want their picture on the website still or not. Um, and um, we also think we're taking our own picture for it. There's not like we, 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 yeah, we'll submit our own picture. Whatever yeah. photo you find. Like Tom, Tom is who's here. He, he got uh, his his picture hijacked off his Facebook page last year, I think, for his. <laughs> 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 okay. He's like, I don't know how I feel about getting stalked on mine. <laughs> that was a fun memory. <laughs> So we won't do that to anybody, I don't think. <laughs> so uh, just let us know if you don't want your picture on there and because we submitted pictures. Is there a page? Do we have like a page where our names are listed? Uh, yeah. yeah, so there's committee. There's the committee's page and then there's the LCAP page. Our names are on the committee's page. So, um, uh, but if our names are not on the LCAP page, but if, with our picture and our name. So, um, and I think we're on to future agenda items. I think uh, the only thing that I, I would like to see happen this year is uh, when, the, when the California dashboard is updated, I'd like for us to spend some time on that. It doesn't have to be like a ton, but maybe take some screenshots of where we are uh, now or versus 2019, because that was the last time we had any new data. So I'd like to see something on that. It doesn't have to be two hours worth, but maybe you get something where people can see what we have to present on that, and then they can kind of take it home and dig further. Uh, so I don't know, that's just an idea. I, no, it's, it's a great idea. And actually in October, um, our assessment team will be providing a presentation to the Board of Education um, regarding uh, the new dashboard is gonna be released in December. Of this year so um, for example those slides can be shared and then if you want to tune in to the, the, the board presentation or we can provide that for folks as well that'll provide a nice overview of what exactly what you're asking yeah. and it, it really covers our metrics our internal metrics mm -hmm. and and some of the pieces of information that correspond with the dashboard so we can get you that information you can tune in you know if you want to watch the video of the board presentation mm -hmm. all the back of the material I watch every board meeting. You do? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I report back to my PTA at school, my district liaison for the PTA. So let them know what's going on. My pleasure. <laughs> and um, let's see, Laura. Oh, sorry. Oh, we, have, we actually have Stephanie on board now. Um, she has she been admitted? Okay, yeah. Okay, cool. I think we're at general visitor comments for Laura, and then we can adjourn early. No, no. no. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, uh, we need a first and second motion to adjourn. I'll move to adjourn. I'll second your move <laughs> to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is 647. This meeting is adjourned. Right. Just enough to make that happen. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>